hello everybody hey. yeah happy october happy spoopy month people spooky season <laughs> so sorry about the delay light life has been life in but we are back we, we are, are back yeah. we- <laughs> tonight's case i want to take it back old hollywood again so now last time we went old hollywood we went to the 70s and we talked about Bob Crane. Well, this episode, we're going to take it back to the nineteen late 1940s. Okay, yes. We're going to take it back to the 1940s. And so tonight, we're going to talk about the disappearance of Jean Spangler. So Jean Spangler, she was an actress, a model, a dancer. She was also a mother. And that's a little bit of background info on Jean. And Jean was born... September 2nd, 1923, in Seattle, Washington. She was the youngest of four children. And about 1948, so when Jean got her acting career started. Now, she was still very, like, newish, per se, into her acting career. And so majority of the roles that she had taken were uncredited. She starred in... Young Man with a Horn, starring Kirk Douglas, uh, When My Baby Smiles at Me, um, Chicken Every Sunday, and she was even in one of the Three Stooges shorts, Mummies Dummies. Okay. And right before she started her her acting career, she did work for some time as a dancer at the Florentine... The Florentine... It is such an awkward name. I'm so sorry. Sorry, I gotta look at my notes. You're good. You're good. The Thank Florentine you. Gardens Nightclub. Okay. The nightclub was owned by Mr. Mark Hansen and Nils or Niles Thor Granlund. And through her employment of working at this nightclub, she became acquainted with some mob affiliates. Mm hmm. Yes, and we'll get back into that here in a minute. But so in 1942, she married plastics manufacturer Dexter Benner. Dexter Benner. The marriage produced a daughter, Christine. However, this marriage was not a happy one. Mm-hmm. And so unfortunately, they got a divorce in 1946. This divorce was very contentious and it led to a custody battle Oof. of Christine. And in two years later, in 1948, Jean did win. She won the custody battle. Yeah. And so, but the, this custody battle was so contentious that um, during this process, Dexter, there had been multiple times where Dexter had withheld Christine from Jean. Mm. Like she had court ordered supervision, you know, court ordered visits, and he would just withhold Christine from her. And so after the divorce, she was living with her mother, Florence, her daughter, her daughter Christine, and she was living with her sister in law, Sophie. I will add that Jean's brother, Sophie's, Sophie's husband, he did pass away in the war. And so, October 7th, 1949, Jean left her Los Angeles home at about five in the evening, and she left Christine with Sophie. She told Sophie she was going to meet Dexter to discuss a child support increase, but also to discuss why he had been late on the previous child support payment. Okay. And after that, she was supposed to go to the studio to film a scene. So about two hours after she left, she phoned the house. She talked to uh, Sophie. And she told Sophie that she was going to work like she was going to work the full eight hours. So she was not going to make it home until way later. And, well, following morning, Sophie wakes up. Jean is not home. Mm. So Sophie, Sophie files a police report. You know, something, 
something's not right. So a saleswoman at the farmer's market, which is only a couple of blocks away from Jean's home, said that at about 6 p.m. that evening, she saw Jean and she had appeared to be, you know, waiting for somebody. Now, that was the last official sighting of Jean. Mm -hmm. Police questioned Dexter, the ex-husband, about you know, the statement that she made to Sophie about her going to see him about the child support payments. And Dexter stated that he hadn't seen Jean for several weeks. Mm -hmm. His Dexter's new wife of one month, Lynn. Oh, my. Cooperated his story. Like, no, he ain't seen Jean. Mm. Suspicious. Oh, ooh, ooh. yes, very. Might I add that Jean? No, I'm so sorry. Lynn. So Lynn, this Lynn's marriage to Dexter this would be her second marriage. Also, Lynn's previous marriage, that husband had some mob ties. Ooh. And so two days later, after Jean disappeared on October 9th, nineteen forty-nine, Jean's purse was found at the Ferndale entrance. Um, of Griffith Park there in LA mm -hmm. which was only a couple of miles from Jean's home so both the purse both straps on, on like one side of the purse had been torn mm -hmm. it was like okay like there was a struggle of some sort and now there was about 60 police officers 100 volunteers searching about 4,000 acres of this park Mm -hmm. they found no other items of Jean there was no money in her purse but Sophie stated that she Jean never really carried money on her so that was not out of the ordinary and so they ruled out robbery as being the reason for the purse being like this however there is something very eyebrow raising that was found in okay. her purse oh my tell it to me it was a handwritten note. Now, authorities were able to confirm that the handwriting on this note was, in fact, Jean's. Mm -hmm. This note was addressed to a man named Kirk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it stated, Kirk, can't wait any longer. Going to see Dr. Scott. It will work best this way as mother is away. And that stating so Jean's mother Florence was actually out of state in Kentucky visiting family at the time of Jean's disappearance. And so police you know they were talking to Jean's friends they were talking to you know her mother yeah. they were talking to a lot of her family they were saying so who, who who's cold? You know and they were like well we don't we don't know anybody named Kirk. However, Florence did say that uh, there was two different instances where a man named Kirk show up. He had showed up to the house, mm -hmm. but he never got out of his vehicle. What? That's creepy. He stayed in the vehicle whenever, I guess, to meet up with Gene, but he never came inside. And so the police, they questioned you know, every doctor there in the LA area with the last name Scott, you know, mm -hmm. none of them had a patient with the last name of Spangler, and none of them had a patient with the last name of Benner, which was previously Jean's married name. Oh my goodness. They, you know, the police had also spoken with her friend, like, okay, who who could this Dr. Scott person be? And some friends had stated that there was a formal medical student who was performing, you know, under the table abortions for money. And then they even stated that he was a son of some wealthy family from back East, but the official identity of mm -hmm. this person is remains unknown. This is wild. No, it, it, there's just, there's so many turns here. And so apparently Jean had previously dated someone by the name of Scotty, 
And it turned out it was a very abusive relationship. However, mm-hmm. according to Jean's lawyer, he said Jean had not seen him since about 1945. Ooh. And so, you know, another week goes by. There's another search. They're at the park, over 200 volunteers and law enforcement. Mm-hmm. And they, one of the dogs, there was some search dogs, they did dig up a, in a shallow hole mm-hmm. it was an LA County jail uniform. Okay. However, you know, nothing aside from that was found from this search. And now, so at the time of Jean's disappearance, she had recently finished filming a part in the movie Young Man with a Horn starring Mr. Kirk Douglas. Mm -hmm. Now, Kirk Douglas was huge. He was huge in the 50s and 60s. And he was... Cause he pa- he passed away here a couple of years ago, but he was truly one okay. of the last remaining actors of like the golden age. Mm-hmm. But he, Kirk Douglas was he was very much up there. Okay, his, his time, and so because of the note, you know, there there was some speculation like, you know, she did complete this film with Kirk. Is this the Kirk she mentioned here in this note? Mm-hmm. There was so much pe- speculation going around with the public that doug kirk himself he called the police he called oh. the station. he was like i do not know who this woman is oh oh and then later on you know he there was another like a phone interview and then you know one of his friends from under well like wait a minute wasn't she you know an extra yeah in your movie and then upon him coming to this realization he was like oh you know, like, oh, I, I, I kidded with her. I joked with her on set, but I've never spent time with her outside of film production. Okay, but you still knew who she was, though, and you lied about it. Okay. And then, so, a couple of days later, mm-hmm. on October 12th, so this is, you know, like five days after Jean's gone missing. Mm-hmm. Kirk holds a formal press conference. What? In what? a statement. And he's like, you know, like verbatim. It says, I told Detective Chief Thad Brown that I didn't remember the girl or the name until a friend recalled. It was she who worked as an extra in a scene with me in my picture, young man with horn. Okay. And I realized she was a tall girl in a dream. In a green dress. I talked and kidded with her a bit on the set. But I never saw her before or after that. And have never been out with her. End quote. I just feel like why do you need feel the need to do all that if you were innocent? Why are you out here holding press conference? They didn't even name you as a suspect, did they? And he just out here giving himself away. And then so... According to some of Jean's friends, Jean had confided with them that she was actually three months pregnant. Oh, so no. She was about three months pregnant at the time that she disappeared. And she had been talking about having an abortion, which at during this time was illegal. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like um, some people who, you know, he had f- frequented some of like the same nightclubs and bars as Jean, you know, they were telling police that they had heard of the formal medical doctor you know nicknamed Mm -hmm. doc you know and they and again you know they still still couldn't locate him and if police were starting to theorize well you know did gene end up having like a botched abortion oh and um one of gene's actor friends mr robert cummings was there on one of the movie sets you know, a couple weeks prior to disappearance and he had seen Jean and, you know, Jean had mentioned like, okay, I'm seeing someone new. And then he, you know, he mm-hmm. was like, is it serious? And she was like, no, but I'm having the time of my life. Okay. Well, right on lady. <laughs> and so this is where some of the other theories as to what potentially could have happened to Jean is that, you know, at this time, there were several females 
who who were a series of victims there in LA that they feel could have been, you know, linked to the Black Dahlia murder. Now, Jean, well, once you see a picture, Jean bore a resemblance to Elizabeth Short, a.k.a. the Black Dahlia. Mm -hmm. This is one of the theories. Yeah. Okay. And however, due to the circle that Jean ran with and because, you know, she was kind of associated with people who were in the mob, Police were also kind of speculating, like, well, does this did her disappearance have to do with the mob? That could have been very well the case. And so it actually turned out that one of her acquaintances claimed that um Jean had allegedly been seen out with a man by the name of Davy Ogle. Now, Davy Ogle was an associate of Mickey Cohen. Now, Mickey Cohen there at that time was actually a mob boss. He was the boss of the Cohen crime family. So, it had been speculated that, well, Gina, she could have been in Palm Springs, or maybe she was in Vegas. However, this is where this gets a little bit more complicated. So Davy Ogle actually disappeared two days after Jean did. Oh my goodness. And the thing about that is police were investigating that because he was actually under indictment um, for conspiracy and that they were thinking maybe he fled to avoid, you know. Jill, mm, yeah. And so police, they go on to investigate this man, Thomas Evans, who mm -hmm. was also he was a gangster, and he was an acquaintance of Ogle. Well, that didn't lead up to much, however. But in April 1950, Spangler's sister Jean's sister Betsy testified that neither she nor Jean were ever acquainted with Ogle or Mickey Cohen or any of his associates. However, in Jean's purse, she had an address book. And there were several several prominent names who were mob associates in this book. So like a little black book. Could be. Could be. Okay. So, and then later on in 1950, a custom agent in El Paso okay. reported seeing Mr. Davy Ogle and a woman who resembled Jean Spangler at a local hotel. The hotel oh. clerk identified Jean from a photograph but neither Davy or Jean's names appeared in the in the hotel's register the little register you know like what none of these sightings were confirmed what and so well so shortly after Jean's disappearance her daughter Christine's custody was temporarily temporarily awarded to Dexter on October twenty seventh, nineteen forty nine. Mm -hmm. So the following year, does Dexter? I want to call him Duster. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Dexter started to have a custody battle with Florence, Jean's mother, mm -hmm. and Dexter was denying Florence visitation with Christine. And so Dexter defied a court order where the court order stated that Florence was permitted to visit with Christine. Dexter wasn't having it. And because he defied this court order, Dexter was ordered to serve 15 days, just 15 days in jail for contempt of court. Time was so much simpler back then. 15 days? And, and as simple as 15 days was, Dexter still wasn't having it. He fled California. Okay, see, they the real issues. He fled California with Christine and his wife, and he later settled in Florida. Mm -hmm. Florence never saw Christine again. Oh, my goodness. And Florence, unfortunately, passed away in 1991. This is heartbreaking. 
Dexter passed away in May, May 7th of 2007 in Jacksonville, Florida. The LAPD continued to search for Jean and, you know, search is very unsuccessful. And, you know, despite, you know, all these searching, there had been other possible sightings in like Arizona Mm -hmm. in southern california and even mexico city two years after gene had disappeared but none of these none of the sightings could be you know they could be confirmed nothing was confirmed and to this day she is still listed as a missing person and the lapd has not closed this case but something even more eye-opening is that sophie gene's sister-in-law stated that very shortly after gene disappeared Dexter showed up to come get Christine. Dexter had scratches on his face. Oh? And Dexter stated that he got the scratches on his face from dropping a crate of glass at work. Come on, Dexter. Uh, in, in police's further investigation, they found a log that Dexter went out on his boat the night Gene went missing. Neither Dexter nor his wife confirmed going on that boat, nor did they discuss why they were on a boat. What? Okay, so possible theories, you know, as far as what what happened to Jean, you know? Mm -hmm. Was it was this the under a table abortion that just went horribly wrong? Yeah. Her ex husband. I, in my opinion, he it truly does seem like he had the most to gain. Yeah, like the whole custody of the child, whatever was going on with the child support payments. Like, why was he late? He That's what I want to know. To like some of her friends that she was going to be coming into some money. Mm. Hey, from how though? You know, did it? Yeah, via you know her ex husband. You know. Wh- when she left that night, you know, did she truly meet with Dexter and they got into like a huge blowout and then Dexter and took it too far? It it could be possible, especially like you say, he it, and then I think too, the fact that he fled did it for me. Cause like, why are you running? Like the dude who was holding the press conference, y'all are just making yourself look guilty. Uh, first of all, why why did he flee? He l- went to the complete opposite side of the country. Mm-hmm. He only had to serve fifteen days in fifteen days in jail. What's the beef? Why leave? Mm-hmm. And Kirk Douglas press conference. See, I don't know. I. I don't understand the point of him having a press conference. Now, maybe he was just, he feared for the backlash of what it could have given his career. Maybe that's why he went to great lengths to have the press conference, per se. You no, know, but that, it just seems a little excessive, you know? Like, it, it to me, it's kind of like you just inserted yourself in this and literally nobody asked you. <laughs> and then, so there's the George Hodel theory. And... For those, you know, who are not familiar with the name George Hodel, George Hodel was like the primary suspect in the Black Dahlia case. Okay. George Hodel was a doctor. Oh. Now, to spare some of the gruesome details, so the way Elizabeth's body was found, what was done to her body essentially had to be done with somebody with medical you know medical background medical training Mm -hmm. and now so george hodell you know he was a doctor and it even claimed at that time that he was performing abortions at that time and that gene did bear a strong resemblance to elizabeth short and there is further speculation because gene's purse where gene's purse was found there at the park was maybe only a quarter mile from hodell's home so that's where his name came into play. However, I truly do feel that Dexter, Jean's ex-husband, had 
the most to gain regarding this entire situation. So did they ever like discover how the note came to be in her purse? Like if it was actually to that person or not? They they knew that it was there in her purse, but however, they could not identify for a fact that Kirk Douglas was the person she was writing to. They just know that it was to Kirk and that she had written it. However, yeah. nothing else really came about that other than then they did confirm that that was Jean's handwriting. That is wild to and me. To this day, Jean's Spangler has never been found. That's so scary. That's so scary. Anytime you tell me a case about anybody involved with the mob, they almost never, ever turn up, okay? <laughs> so half of me Jimmy believes Hoffa. Completely unrelated to this case. But Jimmy Hoffa, they That's never what I'm him. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's why I feel like they could kind of be behind this. It got me a little shifty. But I do also think that the husband would have the most to gain. And like, it's just crazy to me that so many people want to take girls away from their moms. Like, how do you think you're going to be a better parent for her? She's a female. She needs her mom. Like, what are you doing? I don't know. It's just oh, crazy how geez. insensitive he seemed. And if you broke, then get a job. Go work at Burger King or something. I mean, he was a plastics manufacturer. So at that time, it does seem that he money wise he was fine so as far as what was going on with the child support payment that remains unknown mm -hmm. but it was also stated that um dexter was irritated at how you know florence was supposedly bringing up you know she kept bringing up gene to chris mm -hmm. and it was purported that dexter was trying to get it to where his wife lynn could also legally adopt you oh my goodness so it unfortunately that entire situation when christine was young was very contentious and just yeah and the only one who's really like suffering from it is the kid like they are the one who has to go through the most pain of y'all arguing and bickering you know and like seeing each other stressed and like they're pulling her which way and pumping her head up with this and that it's just it's a sad situation all around because now ultimately she lost a parent you know like she'll never get her mom back and jean's mother and even jean's friends you know they stated that jean would never have voluntarily left christine yeah so it is just a it's a very sad and unfortunate situation it is all man. around man it oh. That broke my heart. It was such a good case, Marissa, but it broke my heart. <laughs> so, sorry. so so your money though is on the ex-husband. I, I just due to you know, they had a nasty divorce, mm -hmm. they had a custody battle, and you know, the uh, Sophie, you know, the the Jean sister-in-law, you know, she was stating how, you know, Dexter showed up with all these scratches on his face and then the that police was covering that log of Dexter going out on a boat the night that he disappeared, but he never relayed that information to police or really explained why it, it it seems very suspicious. So that is very suspicious, like to each their own, but you sir, he the way he moves is just suspicious, you know. It don't seem like it seemed kind of like he was trying to be smarter than what he was does that make sense yes yeah and it ultimately mm -hmm, it caught up with him so yeah <laughs> thank you so much for such a beautiful case a very worthy welcome back episode thank you thank you so, I love it. I hope someday in the future, like I I don't know if anything will ever come about it, but mm -hmm. I do really hope that, you know, maybe eventually they do find me Jean too. And she can, you know, rest actually in rest in peace. Yeah, that would be such a dream. So if you guys know anything, please put it in the comments below. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Mm-hmm. We will always respond to you. We are going to try to work on, I guess we'll wait till it grow a little bit more, but 
I have been trying to convince Marissa to get an Instagram. So we will get that going and you guys can send us ideas and stuff if you want, if you want. But Sugar Cookie, anything else you want to say? You can wrap it up, my dear. Well, thank you all for listening to this case. There's a lot, there was a lot of turns. There was a lot of turns and it was a roller coaster. We have some more cases coming up just in time for spooky season. Please tune in. And until next time, we are Two Girls with a Case. Two Girls with a Case. Bye, guys. Bye.